Coucou, coucou, hello everybody, how are you all doing, beautiful people from YouTube, I hope you are all doing well, that you're finding also some time, even if it is tiny, tiny, just to take care of yourself, because I think this is something very, I should say, extremely important. So welcome, oh, welcome back to my channel, my name is Cyril. I used to be a stem cell researcher for quite some time, and this is why I can tell you about the science behind skincare ingredients. And today's video, I am finally going to talk about vitamin C derivatives, and I'm also going to tell you if they are really worth it, and if you should try them. I'm also going to give you like some products, recommendation, and etc. and blah, blah, blah. So let's dive in into the video. So vitamin C. Um, vitamin C is known as L-ascorbic acid, I have several videos already published on vitamin C. If you have to choose between derivatives and um, vitamin C, uh, just in terms of scientific evidence, you need to opt for vitamin C, which is L-ascorbic acid. Something that I've already told you a ton of times, but I'm going to repeat it today, is that you need to be very careful because there are a ton of brands, even brands that I really love, that will put on the packet, hi, we have vitamin C. And when I'm checking the ingredient list, it does not contain ascorbic acid. So be very careful because they are using derivatives. Why I am always in phases, in phases, this point, something like that. Uh, it is because we know that L-ascorbic acid is a natural vitamin that is occurring in your skin, especially in your epidermis. We have some dreadful data to show that if the skin is exposed um, under UV, the vitamin C uh, stock in your epidermis is like completely depleted very, very shortly. And after 15 minutes of UV exposure, you have um, ROS, which is reactive oxidation species, aka okay, free radicals, <laughs> very, very um, lovely. Now, of course, vitamin C is not necessarily for every single one of us because um, to be efficient, to be able to penetrate um, into your epidermis, um, it has to be for formulating into a water-based uh, formula with a pH below 4, so therefore it could be irritating and also exfoliating for certain skin type. So for some of you, you are not be uh, you will not be able to uh, simply tolerate it. This is as simple as that. Or you have like very specific uh, specific skin issue, and you might um, state up uh, state up your game. Maybe not, but you just <laughs> might want to to add like derivative, uh, uh, vitamin C derivative on top of vitamin C, which is also something uh, that you can uh, do. So there are a ton of different uh, derivatives. I'm not going to talk about all of them or else it is going to talk like forever. So the first one are like the salt form of um, vitamin C, which is SAP or MLP. So it's sodium ascorbyl phosphate or magnesium ascorbyl phosphate. So you can find one derivative from uh, the ordinary. So those one, they seems to be uh, a little bit more gimmicky in the sense that they do not penetrate into the skin, even though they are uh, pretty stable uh, in the formula, because one big issue of ascorbic acid is that it is very unstable. Remember this, if your serum, your water-based serum, turns yellow and very orange, you need to discard it because the vitamin C is oxidized. A good advantage of, uh, of the derivative, <laughs> a good advantage of all the derivatives is that they are very stable. So uh, those two, they are not going to uh, penetrate into the skin or very, very um, unlikely. So this is um, a pretty big, counts. Uh, which does it mean that they are not useful? No, if you are suffering from hyperpigmentation, from hyperpigmentation they seems also to brighten the skin uh, tone. So you also need to, to remember this. Uh, I always put a big emphasis with vitamin C because it is an antioxidant and most likely on the long term to slow down the process of aging. This is wonderful. This is something that you want. Um, for the most of the derivative, there are some who are probably also antioxidant. It is probably not the case, but we are not sure. Or if they are, compared to vitamin C, they don't stay in um, a chance. This is what I'm telling you. So those two, they are not a, a plus, unless you have a very complex formula, such as um, this one, which is the clinical ceramide enriched firming moisturizer. That this one contains a, a blend of beautiful actives. On, and you do find like the phosphate uh, forms, like the salt form of vitamin C. Because they are different forms in this one, I'm fine with it. But like, like a solo serum, I would not bother. 
Uh, then you have um, the glucoside form, which is the um, uh, glucosal ascorbide. You have a beautiful serum from The Ordinary. What I really love about this one is that it can be formulated around a pH of 6, and it's very, very gentle. For those of you who have a very sensitive skin, especially uh, you are sensitive to derivative of vitamin C, and also to vitamin C, and you're like, oh my god, I just have to give up on it, you can give it a try to this one. This one is an excellent one. Uh, the one from The Ordinary is really really well done. It has 12% of vitamin C. I mean, I, I really like uh, the overall formula. Is it the best of the derivative? No, it is not, but it does seem to penetrate into the skin, which is a good um, plus. Another one, which is probably one of my favorite one, it also have um, has some very interesting data on it. It is the palmitate form of ascorbyl acid. So you have two, you have the ascorbyl 6 palmitate, I don't know any product uh, that featured this one. Uh, this one doesn't seem to be really com converting into ascorbic acid. But there is another one, which is, I've already talked about this one, which is the tetra isopalmitate uh, form of vitamin C. This one seems to be very uh, interesting. So it has four palmitate groups. So therefore, um, it seems to be able to penetrate into the skin. And there are some data to show that it does penetrate the skin and that it is converted into vitamin C. It has been done on a 3D model of uh, human skin. So it's not the best, but at the same time, it is not the worst one. Um, so this one, you can find it, of course, with the ordinary one that contains 20% of it, which is uh, excellent. Is it the most pleasant formula? No, it feels a little bit greasy in this one, but still it is a good one. I mean, if you're on a tight budget and you don't mind it, I mean, go for it, really go for it. Another alternative that is so well done is the one from SVR. I wish it was fragrance-free. And this is the Hydra Acid C20, but this is an excellent one. If you are not sensitive to fragrance, you can give it a try. Because it does contain 20%, and if you have very sensitive skin, I would be cautious. So don't try it like every single day. Go slowly. Uh, the last one, uh, which is, I would say, a very promising one, which is the 3O ethyl ascorbic acid. Uh, the first product that I've discovered that is still my favorite one, actually, the one from uh, Neod. Um, that contains 30% of this derivative. Again, go slowly with it. If you are suffering from pigmentation, this is anecdotal, but I did see improvement on my partner. He's a people of color. He does have a medium skin tone with the pigmentation. So he is my personal guinea pig. <laughs> and I did observe um, a reduction of the pigmentation. What you can do, and this is when it's uh, starting to be very interesting, is that you can do like a little cocktail of those one. For example, you can use um, the ethyl ascorbic form in the evening and in the morning you can mix the glucoside form with the uh, palmitate form um, of vitamin C, so the detra is all palmitate form. Something like that on top actually of your vitamin C, so what you can do is that in the morning you use your ascorbic acid, you wait like maximum for one minute, you can use your hydrating product and with your moisturizer you can blend uh, the vitamin C, so the detra uh, Oh, the tetra is opamitide form of vitamin C with the glucoside form and you massage well your face, you wait and then you apply a solid coat of your sunscreen like a lot <laughs> of it. So, wow, basically that's it. I hope you did like this, this video, that you find it uh, interesting. Remember that what is really proven is that vitamin C, alascobic acid, is an antioxidant for the West, for the rest. Not sure, not sure <laughs> at all. So, you did like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new, subscribe, subscribe, people, and don't forget the bell, because like that, you get notified. Also, I have two Instagram accounts, one in English and one in French, so if you uh, speak in French, si vous parlez français, welcome. And well, that's it, so I will see you next time. Thank you so, so much for being here, and I will see you next time. Au revoir.